in Norwich, there was a thing we called the Stage Door Canteen. They opened these in the big cities. Still, rank had its privileges. There was an officer's bar and another rank's bar. And I was, I called in there one. I didn't go a lot, but I called in one night. One of the attractions was that occasionally somebody like Bing Crosby had come down. It was one of these sort of nights I'd gone down with. I met some American flying officers. And I got chatting to these lads. There were three, maybe four of them. They'd never been to a, a British Army unit at all. And I said, look, come and have dinner in our mess. And, uh, but when we sat down for dinner, after dinner, the port was passed, passed around the table anti-clockwise. And we drank from the port and drank from the port after dinner. So they said to me, come and have dinner with our camp. You'll find it different. So a couple of nights later, I went up to Horshamson Fair. So I went in, found these lads eventually. The evening meal was served in the, the hangar, which was kept for feeding. The others all had aircraft in. And everybody from the general officer commanding the station queued up with a little metal tray with four indents in it. A soup in there, vegetables in there, and the meat in this, and the pudding in that. And sat down where he could find a seat and ate it. You could be sitting next to the general. You could be finding, sitting next to one of the mechanics. You don't know. Entirely different from what he'd go in the British Army. They said Glenn Miller's coming. So I went, and flying fortresses and liberators were in the way. They cleared them out of anger, put a stage up, and Glenn Miller appeared on the stage. And no women on the stage, no male. And there was colour segregation as well. The black members of the units did not mix with the white members of the unit. But Glenn Miller started playing, and these GIs began to j jive with each other. You've never seen anything like him in your life. My God, he made the war, did that. There were hundreds and hundreds of them in this hangar, jiving together to Glenn Miller. I mean, it's the sort of thing that you dream about, isn't it? Well, the Americans, they tried to st storm the, the bandstand. And, <laughs> dear me. But while I was there, one of these lads said, uh, have you ever been in an aeroplane? I said, I haven't, no. He said, well, look, come with us. We're going to Berlin tomorrow night, and with loads of room. I mean, loaded with bombs, well, damn it. There were another 10 people in the bomber. There's plenty of room in it. He said, well, try and get permission to come. I mentioned to the CEO, he said, yeah, well, you won't get shot. You'll be caught martial if you do go. You are not going. I said, God, do I didn't, because we didn't come back. And they'd sent something like 80 aircraft out from that station. And they got about 15 back. The losses were enormous. Probably by the time we got up towards Le Havre, the dreadful news was that Glenn Miller had been shot down. And believe me, the war almost finished that day because people were so upset.